हाँ रहा बढ़ाने में बढ़ाने बुआ का रहे जरे इंगुरी न्यू रहे जियो में लेटे जिए सारे रहा तुम लेटे रहे भारा दी तक के तब ऐसे तीन गुरी बाद में मारी थी ले हाँ मैं लेटे रहे इन को मज़े दे इन तो इन तो को मज़े दे इन तो जर करा दिए थे मैं लेटे रहे यार हाँ तो गुफ हाँ तो गुफ आशी लम्बा दे तो फ़ायर एक बार ठाई ले रहा है सामने आर मूत मारे वाले These people have just crossed the border. They're in no man's land. They've been driven from their homes in Myanmar. Now they're waiting for permission to enter Bangladesh. The Rohingya are a people that neither country wants. And what happened in your village? They just burned our houses. These are some of the survivors. They're hungry, they're sick, and they're scared. Across the river, there's a deliberate campaign of terror going on. A campaign from which no one is safe. Well, we don't know how many people have been killed, but we do have some idea of how many have been burnt and chased out of their homes. These are just a tiny fraction of the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people who have fled. In our investigation, we're going to focus on the events of one day, of one massacre in one village, and its name is Tulatoli. Since August, more than 600,000 people have sought refuge in the camps in Bangladesh. People who brought little with them but the nightmarish memories of their experiences at the hands of the Burmese military. We've come here to find survivors of the Tulatoli massacre. We've spoken to six of them. We've cross-referenced their testimony with video evidence. Absolutely horrific pictures. With maps of the local area, as well as with interviews collected by human rights organizations. What emerges is a picture of systematic violence. Violence that has been described as a textbook example of ethnic cleansing. Hey, do you think military go down? Ayer, a day three stari, August three stari. Ayer de astwa vazi badeu bu, din or astwa vazi baderi ya. Do you think that raw bu bar August ma hai three stari hamma de untu lobbo untu military ayor re? Using a satellite photograph of the area, a Rohingya elder showed me how the massacre unfolded. The village of Tulatoli consists of a number of settlements surrounded on three sides by the meandering flow of a river. In previous days, soldiers had set fire to other villages on the opposite bank. That Wednesday morning, the 30th of August, they crossed into Tulatoli. There was panic. Everyone mentions the river, with the soldiers advancing from the northwest and a police post to the south, many of the villagers ran east. They ended up on the riverbank. They were trapped. Yeah. 
Tuna Sandy does not have a channel. I do. I hope for the Bidam Bugun Tiagra. Tiagra by the Abar. Bugun and the Shuda River, the full of bad and magic. Guli Mate Matin, Hodunla Mardere, Elazar Horandes, Kiesha Tund Duder, Halvaragoi, Arkia, Michaduder, and the Latin Laguri, Manus Hosen Bashe, Arum Guru Mother, Berana Murtwendo, Guru in Lagura Wendo, Marie. And you yourself were on the other side of the river. Anura showed us where she and others swam across the river, at a point downstream where it was narrow enough to cross. They used banana trees and plastic canisters as life rafts. Did, did you see this with your own eyes? Yeah, yeah. From a hill on the opposite bank, they watched the horror unfold. In order for our fine mar the Badiola in Kobolanayar, Matasai Chayri Fura de Bade Gatacol could your Maribade, Gatacol could your Maldives on Ziazano Shiro, in the Gatacol for a Gatacol man who could not need a jewel. Eriva, the Manchotan Dabo, La Boscan, Ilo, Hamal Taman, the Indo, two the Tarafura de Hodafuna. Travel to Fura. Far out of high marred, Funshar Bari marred, Gulid Bari marred, Hengorodin, Aramanu Kutu Saita Kyodori. The horrific scenes she witnessed still give her nightmares. Anura watched the bodies of her neighbor's children wash up on the riverbank. The scene was filmed by another villager. The children's names were Rashida, five years old, Kushida, three, and Zahida, who was 11 months. Anora Begum, her husband and her four children all managed to escape with their lives. Mohammed Suleiman was not so fortunate. He and his youngest daughter Shahida survived, but three of her sisters were killed and so was their mother. <laughs> the violence began five days before the massacre at Tulatoli, on the 25th of August, when members of a Rohingya militant group attacked a number of police posts inside Myanmar, killing 12. In response, the Burmese military began what they call clearance operations. Boats filled with refugees have been coming ever since. It's two months since the terrible incidents that we've been looking at, and these people are saying that it's still going on. Some have accused the Burmese government of using the attacks by the militants as a pretext for a vicious and indiscriminate crackdown against civilians. The Bangladeshi authorities monitor what goes on on the other side of the border. And I've been told that from the beginning of August, so about three weeks, before the violence started, they noticed an increase in military activity on the Myanmar side. Now, if that's true, that would suggest an element of preparation for the violence that followed. And this is a suggestion that we've heard corroborated by some of the witnesses we've spoken to as well. 
We were told about an incident that happened nearly two weeks before the massacre at Tulatone. Also, before the attacks by the militant group known as the Arakan Rohingya Salvation Army, which sparked the response by the Burmese military. Were they trying to recruit people in the village? Was there some truth to that? No, Arab no one did not. But the Arab Witnesses said the policemen were called in by the village administrator, a local Buddhist government official. A few days later, that same official called a meeting. Elders from both communities were asked to sign a kind of peace treaty. Was that unusual to be asked to do something like that? The Rohingya of Tulatoli saw that document as an explicit guarantee of their safety. It's because of this that they stayed in their homes even when they saw other villages being burnt. Now they believe the administrator double-crossed them. <laughs> Almost everyone we spoke to mentioned this village administrator, the local government representative. His name is Ang Kyo Singh. He would accuse the villagers of supporting the militants, some said. Others, that he tried to force them to register as foreigners. Another village elder, Nobi Hussein, told me that before the massacre, he and Mr. Singh had been in regular contact. Do you do you have his phone number? Can can you call him? Hari. Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Human rights investigators yeah. and journalists have been trying to talk to this man for months. None have managed to contact him until now. Yeah. Mr. Hussein lost a son and three grandchildren in the attack. Now, over a crackly phone line, he accuses the village administrator of complicity in the massacre. At the end of the conversation, Mr. Hussein seems unconvinced. Do you believe him? No, I the majority of Myanmar's Rohingya Muslims have by now already fled. Dispossessed and stateless, the mud-soaked camps of Bangladesh are what they must, for now, call home. The Burmese government says its military operations in Rakhine state are a response to attacks by militants from the Arakan Rohingya Salvation Army on the 25th of August. But what about those reports of troop movements weeks earlier? Well, we're on our way now to meet an officer in the Bangladeshi border guard who might know more about this and might be willing to talk to us. Hello, Major. Yeah, yeah. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, you're fine. Good. Well, the Major said he wasn't authorised to speak to the BBC on camera, but we did have a conversation off camera, and he said I could quote him with the following, that they saw from around the 5th of August a huge concentration, those are his words, 
of Myanmar military in the border area. He said apart from burning people's homes, they extorted valuables, took their money. I asked him what the purpose of all of this was. He said they're trying to make Rakhine State Rohingya free. By late morning on the 30th of August, on the riverbank at Tulatoli, dozens of people had already been murdered. But it wasn't over yet. Some villagers had escaped by swimming across the river, but many remained behind, especially younger women who'd been separated from the rest by the soldiers. Those who survived endured an ordeal of almost unimaginable horror. <laughs> Severely burnt and wounded, Momtaz managed to crawl to safety and eventually escape under cover of darkness. She came to Bangladesh with her seven-year-old daughter, Razia. Razia was beaten by the soldiers but survived. The others did not. One of her children, she said, was burnt to death. At least one other survivor of the Tulatoli massacre has reported that her young child was thrown into a fire. Others had infants torn from their arms. Momtaz is only 30 years old. The men who raped her, who killed her children, were soldiers. But she, like others, told us that non-Rohingya civilians took part in the attack that day as well, demanding money and valuables. I wondered about the Buddhist village administrator. No one we spoke to said he personally took part in the attack, and it seems unlikely a local civilian official could have stopped the powerful Burmese military. But still, it felt like he had questions to answer. Hello, sir. It's the BBC here. Um, just to say, we're, we're recording this call. Can I ask you, why did you not warn the villagers that the army was going to come in? The people here say that you wanted the Rohingya out of the village, that you wanted them gone. The Burmese government doesn't regard the Rohingya Muslims as citizens of Myanmar. Stuck in the camps in Bangladesh without official status, it'll be hard for them to return home, even if they felt it was safe to do so. The United Nations has called this ethnic cleansing.
Others prefer the term genocide. By whatever name you call it, the massacre at Tulatoli was a monstrous crime. A crime the Burmese government is not investigating. Every evening on the border, more people try to cross to safety in Bangladesh. New arrivals say their villages are still being burnt, that they're still being chased and terrorized from their homes. If it continues like this, there won't be many Rohingya left in Myanmar.